Greetings and welcome to Rant and Rank, the show where we come together and rant about and rank your favorite artist's studio discography. With me today, his name is not Jonas, it's Jason. There you go, there you go. And for the second time ever, the man who doesn't even own a sweater, Tim. (laughs) (laughs) And the guy who can't can't stop partying, partying, Joe. That's right. Um, As you'll notice... Um, our good friend Ed is not with us today for our rant rank. Ed is on a sabbatical and or he joined a nunnery. We're not 100% sure. He told us sabbatical, but we're going nunnery. Wouldn't that man look good in black and white? The little flowing robe. <laughs> but in his absence, he would like everyone to know that the only Weezer album that matters is Ratitude. That's right. He's got so we're just going off of that. Yeah, just Ratitude all the way through. <laughs> As uh, Jason changes uh, our, our pick um, from Ed, this video here is actually a Patreon pick. So you can join our Patreon. We have a gold, we have a silver, and we have a bronze level. And if you are at the gold level or above, there's no above. If you're at the gold level, you can choose an artist and we'll randomly pick one each month to do. So. As uh, so fucking rad's pick is Weezer, so we're doing a week full of Weezer. We're doing our yes. rant, rant, <clears throat> top songs, and is it art for them? We are not including the Teal album because it's covers, and we're not including Death to False Metal because it's a compilation. Yeah, and apparently there's like some uh, some season EPs that recently came out that we're not including too. Yeah, we're not doing seasons, which they're okay. actually pretty good, but I'm not falling for it again, Rivers. So you're not getting me again. <laughs> also, there's 14. That's enough, Yarbles. That's enough. Yeah, thank, thanks, Yarbles, for making us into 14 <laughs> fucking Weezer albums. Um, we do have a returning uh, segment here today, and it's called Shameless Self-Promotion. Tim, shamelessly self-promote yourself and tell the people who they are, who you are if you haven't uh, watched Soundgarden. Well, let me tell the people who they are. Uh, I am a, Please. my name's Tim. I, you know, I play drums. I'm in a band. We're called Sabretooth. You can find us on the interwebs at Sabretooth PNW, wherever fine hashtags are sold. Um, <laughs> we're also on all the streaming services. Um, there's, there's a couple other Sabretooths that we don't mention. So, you know, you're on the right one. If you have timber chimp. Nobody else has that. Uh, <laughs> and other than that, you know, I just, I listen to music. So this is, I'm happy to be back. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, so glad to have you. Glad you could join us. Yep. Um, so you said you're on all the uh, streaming services. How can I get you on Audible? Can we get on you to, Audible? Yeah, can we get you to, like, <laughs> sing a book to me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like them. <laughs> Sam, I am. <laughs> I love it. Um, housekeeping, besides the housekeeping we just went through, that cat's tail looked real weird in your uh, picture there, Jason. Yeah, he's stuck on my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're watching a YouTube video. Subscribe to a YouTube video. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all of you who have already subscribed. Hopefully you have turned on notifications and you now know uh, that a new video is out and you are watching it probably at work when you're not supposed to be which is great we don't mind like me yeah damn the man um oh and follow us on tiktok our old asses are on tiktok now there you go we're we're hip and cool (laughs) like the kids say something insert line here somebody insert a line there with whatever the kids say it's speak i don't know anything about that (laughs) it's poggers that's right (laughs) We're ticking and talking around here. Uh, Also, join us on Discord. We'd love that. Patreon, we just talked about. There's uh, multiple tiers. Silver and above get an exclusive video, at least one a month. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all we're going to do there. So, Weezer. Um, We uh, we were asked to do Weezer by Yarbles, so we did. We listened to 14 albums. Some of us in a span of two weeks. Some of us in a span of two days. Um... I don't know which like one. Some better. of us in the span of two decades. That's right. Jason. Yeah. Yep. That's, this guy. that's, this that's guy. what I was going to say. You know, usually you ask, how did you get into a band? In this case, it's, you know, when did you stop listening to music? 
Well, I know where I would have stopped if I had been following along, so I'll bring that up at some point. Yeah, Tim, give us your relationship with Weezer. Okay, well, obviously I know who they are. Um, Sweat, uh, the Blue Album, their first album, came out when I was in high school, you know, during the fun grunge years where we had multiple friends who had, you know, had the album. Uh, some people were into it. I was never really into it. Um, obviously saw the videos on MTV, all that good stuff. Uh, heard the singles over the years, but just never never followed through, I guess. And uh, so uh, my real relationship with Weezer started about 48 hours ago where I listened to 14 <laughs> albums in a row. For, uh, uh, and... I had heard the blue album. I had heard Pinkerton. I had heard the green album and I've heard the teal album. Um, but other than that, this was all new to me other than the singles. And even some of those were pretty new. So. Awesome. Uh, Jason. Uh, well, yeah, you know, the blue album, buddy Holly undone. Heard him back then, you know, followed them for quite a while. You gotta be you gotta be a, a sadomasochist to like Weezer, you know. The, they say the people who hate Weezer the most are the Weezer fans, and that's kind of true. So, but in a way, it's the sign of a good band, though. To me, the Weezer's band history and their story is more interesting than most of the albums. <laughs> they, they have a very Rivers has a very weird, interesting career, to say the least. Sure. But I guess we'll get into that. <laughs> I uh, same as y'all. Blue album obviously uh, came out. It was on the radio everywhere. Um, Pinkerton a little less so. Um, and in the Green album, uh, two thousand one, I graduated high school. That's right. I'm dating myself. Um, and it was so Literally. it was on the radio. Um, so I heard that a lot. After the Green album, I think I listened to Maladroit like once. And then that's, that's the extent of that's where I stopped listening to Weezer is the, right after Green Out. Well, you, you know, <laughs> you lucked out. <laughs> <laughs> until, uh, until obviously we were doing it for uh, the show here. And now I've listened to, I've listened to everything but like Teal, the, the compilation and Seasons. And I'm just not going to. I refuse. <laughs> Neither am I. At some point, I will. You know, eventually, I'll get to it. I think seasons would be fun to listen to. Uh, seasons if is good it's, if it's That's pretty good, good um, because there are a lot of things that aren't pretty good. So we'll get into that though. All right, Tim, as our guest, um, we are going to give you the honor of telling us what <laughs> your fourteen <laughs> album is. Okay, sure. So. One thing I'm going to bring up on a few of these albums that I found kind of interesting is that there's there seems to be clear uh, side A's and side B's musically. Uh, they'll start one place and then it ends up completely different. And the last one definitely follows that formula. I'm, of course, talking about Ratitude. It is um, It starts off... Uh, it's just pop radio. It is the Formula 101. Uh, it sounds like at this point in their career, which was 2009, um, they're just trying to fit on the radio and appeal to the masses. And then about halfway through it, um, so like the first half, it's kind of clubby, kind of dancey. And then, yeah, the second half, it's just this weird... Um, like boy band <laughs> album. <laughs> it, it's really weird. Um, the last song in the mall, uh, my notes for it is hard rock for 12 year olds. <laughs> um, the, that darkness song, uh, polo rock. I think we started a new, uh, new genre with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Love is the answer is like this weird Indian slash Arabian influence. Um, 
It's about as genuine as Aerosmith's Taste of India. (laughs) Sure, yeah. No, and and again, my notes, because I I took notes on probably 75% of these albums. A couple of them I just tried to enjoy, and a couple of them I just tried to get through. (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, my notes for that are, it's it's trying to be We Are the World and Fails. (laughs) Yeah, Ratitude is a uh, tough listen. Um, can't stop partying. Can start writing some lyrics, though. Come on. Okay. Yeah, that's it, Ratitude. I got nothing else. I will say, though, Can't Stop Partying, if you listen to the demo of it, it's actually a really good song. Like, it's more, like, sad and sarcastic and some of, you know, but it's when he put it on Ratitude and just threw all this overproduction on it and made it try to sound sincere or genuine, and it just screwed it all up. But I, I'm going to go ahead and drop Ratitude in mine. Oh, my notes. Tim actually talked more about it than I, I'm going to. <laughs> I, I took some notes. If you're wondering if I want you to, I want you to. It's fun. It's catchy. I wouldn't skip it if it was on the radio. That's it. This album is awful. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it. Moving on. <laughs> um, so my number 14 album, as it may come to a surprise to everybody, is going to be Ratitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got the trifecta here. Um, I... and, and it is Ed's favorite, of course, right? Yeah. 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 Ed. Okay. It's the only one that matters. Crossed. Love um... you, Ed. We miss you. <laughs> Um, number one is good. My notes are number one is good. The rest is terrible. Um, so the the first song is is a song that I was like, man, this this could have been on a different Weezer album. Um, and actually, what's funny is I started listening. I've never listened to Ratitude before. I've heard a lot of shit about Ratitude, and I started it up and I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. What's everybody talking about? And then we got the song two, and then you know from there on, it just kept kept going uh, in a bad direction. At at some point, I started collecting Weezer vinyl. And by 2009, that's, that's when I started getting into vinyl seriously. And I just didn't buy this. So this album. would have been like the one that was cheap and available at the time. And I'm like, I'm not fucking buying this. And now it's one of the only ones I'm missing and it's way overpriced because it's rare. And I'm not spending more than $15, $20 on <laughs> Ratitude just to own it. Um, so the... Hindi song, the the Hindi version of Love is the Answer. I don't mind the uh, Indian Arab, the Hindi parts. I think those are interesting. But it's just not a good song. I mean, that's not a good song to put it with. I was like, this is interesting. It's just with a bad song. You just, you know, you didn't really do much there with it. Um, six, seven, and eight. Let's see. Tripping Down the Freeway, Love is the Answer, Let It All Hang Out. Rough. That is just a rough patch of songs to get through um I, I mean so much so that i wrote it down six seven eight rough patch uh, for me to for me to listen to so yeah ratitude i don't yeah i'm not gonna spend much more time with it it's uh the first song's good um that can't stop partying it's like we were trying to write a hit like on the radio with uh isn't it is uh the inquisitive rapper with him on that one i don't remember who's on it's weezer and it's wheezy is Weezy well, and that song what? "I'm Your Daddy" sounded like a uh, like a good oh, Charlotte throwaway. That was on there. <laughs> yeah, like like we're really we're shooting for the radio. Yeah, but we're about five years too late. Uh, the girl got hot. A little bit of that uh, Weezer cringe. We, we, you know, we're gonna run into here. I won't get into that. Yeah, There's right. a lot of Weezer cringe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's number fourteen. Um, Jason, give us number thirteen. All right, my number thirteen is. Pacific Daydream. <laughs> My child just gasped. I was me. like, "Really?" <laughs> I thought that was Tim gasping, and I was like, "Tim, that's a uh, no." That was a, a quite no, a no. bit of a gasp. All right, Mexican fen- uh, Mexican Fender. I do like that song. Um, I had such high hopes after coming after, you know, the whole white album, black album, Pacific Daydream time frame, you know, that was Rivers going to us. But uh, <laughs> it's, you know, after two amazing Weezer albums in a row, they released a single, and I'm like, this single's really great. Uh, and 
AO wanted me to make sure I say that if Me Mexican Fender needs to be in one of our top songs just for the video. If you haven't seen the video, oh, here's, a, here's a little part of it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> after that, it's all downhill. Uh, Beach Boys to the QB Blitz are not good. Sweet Mary's okay, nothing special, but not offensive. So, I mean, I guess it's got that going. And I like any friend of Diane's is good. It's uh, working at Papa John's. I was making good bread, got $20 tip on New Year's, and I love, and I love out to the lake. I don't know if I was probably drunk when i wrote that but uh <laughs> i just I, I wanted to say it because i had to throw in that pizza reference because it seems to be a trend now is <laughs> got to mention pizza on the show that's right uh it's just a simple pop <laughs> uh, i don't know why they got to add all this electronic bullshit just keep it simple pop rock i mean what a letdown it beats ratitude just because i love mexican fender and it has two other decent songs so that's about it I'm not a fan <laughs> all right well that's uh that's further down than i expected that uh album to go by uh, by quite a bit i think let me see where where are we at on my list here yeah by a little bit um so my number 13 the correct number 13 i believe <laughs> is the black album um the Black Album is a very poppy album to me, but it's not catchy. Uh, so it's like a poppy album that has no real reason to be poppy. And I know it's supposed to be the Black Album, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, this was when we were getting darker. I don't feel it. I'm not feeling darker here. I'm feeling terrible. I feel I feel just bad um, after listening to it. So opening track is uh i don't know the name of it i just wrote it was bad can't knock the hustle, <laughs> yeah, can't <laughs> the hustle. Um, yeah just bad uh can't stop the hustle isn't it oh no, can't, oh, no okay. it's can't knock can't knock it the can't hustle. Not, dude i was drunk as shit right these nights <laughs> um number... i wrote knock so i don't know yeah, no, I'm, I'm, no idea. I'm, I'm looking okay. at it currently um, because I had to take my notes by like just I couldn't do the track names. Because like after fourteen like, albums, by the time you get to the black album, you're probably pretty drunk. Um, That's my excuse. Can confirm. My notes for "Can't Knock the Hustle" is literally just what? <laughs> yeah, just bad. That's it. That's what I put. Um, the second song I like the music saved my life line, um, but short of that, that's not a great song either. Um, the zombie bastards. Uh, die, die, you we, zombie We got bastards. some uh, follow up with some okay songs. Uh, number five, not good. Piece of cake, just not a good one. Um, did not like too many thoughts in my head. Uh, number Byzantine, um, I, 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 it's okay, I guess, but I do like the put a red bay, beret on and walk or moonwalk naked. I thought that was a pretty funny line. Yeah, who wrote the lyrics to that? Ah, Laura Jane Grace. Really. Yeah, like she was tweeting, her, her and Rivers were tweeting back and forth, and he kind of like took all that and put it into that song. Oh, that's, that's kinda, cool. That's cool. Um, still not a good. No. <laughs> um, and then on my for the closing, California Snow. I like the music, but the song's not good. Um, so those are those are all my notes on the Black Album. Tim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Thirteen. No, Thirteen. Yeah. So 13 is an album I did not take any notes on. So I'm just going to like lay it out there and we're going to run with it. Uh, number 13 is going to be Van Weezer. Um, the only thing I really remember about this is um, one song is just the music to Crazy Train, but they kind of <laughs> don't even play it right. And then the rest of the album what? was... Yeah, and like... With a with a title like Van Weezer, you would expect some sort of Van Halen anything, but instead you just get really sh cheesy like '80s metal guitar licks over more Weezer. Uh, it, it didn't fit at all. Um, now th this was number fourteen. I went in order, um, so the Weezer fatigue was for real. Um, 
but this was just i there was nothing redeeming about this at all all right let's um <clears throat> well I'll, a little, you know, little diversity here i yeah. like it <laughs> And you guys got to let me know if I have hot takes here, because I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> this was just kind of first impressions. Some of them I liked, some of them I didn't. This one I just, I struggled to get through. I, I don't think it's that hot of a take because it's my number 12. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that so, works. So we may be in the, in this together. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you two are in there. I got a little higher than that. Yeah, I, and I think it's a fun album. Um, I think that the, you know, like the 70s licks or the 80s licks uh, are, are kind of fun. Um, I like the guitar openings on a lot of the songs. I like the music on a lot of the songs. As far as the, uh, you know, lyrics and things going together, I it, you know, I don't know. I like, um, let's see here. Um, Hero, I believe it is. Yes. Um, Hero, it's it's an okay song. I, th I think I like the lyrics. It just kind of seems like a forced idea of a song we're trying to put together. You know, which we're the trying whole to talk album felt pretty forced to me. Yeah, I was it like, kind of, it kind of was though, because so they they, were, they they for the COVID like sh they were they were going to go, go on that hella mega tour with Green Day, and they needed some songs to play in a stadium. So they wrote this record, but then COVID happened and the tour got delayed. So then they put out "Okay, Human" instead, and then they released Van Weezer. But it was they kind of did it just because they were going on that big stadium tour with Green Day. Okay, okay. So it was kind of forced, but you know they couldn't really tour on "Okay, Human" in a big, large stadium. That's true. Bummer. Um, and again, I, I was on, I went to that show and they you know they played a couple from Van Weezer, but mostly it was you know Undone and the Sweater Song and yeah, sure, oh, okay, yeah. Beverly Hills. Hill. I don't remember if they did, but they might have done Beverly Hills. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, I need like the twelve inch dance remix version of that. Like, Undone put it on loop. <laughs> Undone was funny because he like he fucked up the lyrics and he's like, Jesus Christ, I played that song a million times. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> <laughs> See if Rivers messes up on Undone, I can mess up on the intro every week. Nope, nope, <laughs> no excuse, no excuse. We've already done it once today, so stay tuned. We should have a counter up for like each artist how many times Joe messes up. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, and the Crazy Train riff, I was like, oh, are they going to cover uh, Crazy Train? This is this is going to be cool. I think this will be neat in the middle of a van weezer album it would have made a lot more sense yeah hey, they covered paranoid oh <laughs> well they should just went stuck with that yeah but the then it turns into a different song and i was like my mind i was driving and i was like i'm gonna wreck i'm gonna wreck into a ditch because i can't figure out what's happening here um so yeah i mean and it's not like this is an all bad album like i said i think it's a lot of fun i think there's some pretty good songs on it i think there's some not good songs on it um, but it just kind of fell to the 12th spot um tim give me your number 12 well just kind of in lockstep with you we're going to go with the black album um i'm pretty sure this is where the fatigue kicked in because i took like half notes <laughs> at least five songs uh, it just left blank they like i didn't even know what to say um yeah I, a weird experiment and uh, yeah uh, like I don't know what number this is in order, but I was already pretty deep and I felt like I had an idea of what to expect. And then this just kind of knocked the hustle out of me. And uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I won't revisit it again. It's. <laughs> yeah, this, right. is, this is a skip. This is a skip one for me. Yeah, yeah, this one's, uh, it was a tough listen. It's very pop. It's and that's what makes it really hard for me. And not just pop. Uh, the few notes I have are uh, like "High as a Kite" is an Elton John song, <laughs> and then that's followed off with uh, "Living in like L.A." Living in L.A. It's like that could be a, that could have been on iCarly, or you know, pick a Disney show. Uh, it's like real poppy pop. And for 2019, that means Hannah Montana. And 
uh, and then to have Weezer try that in an like a weird electronic funk context just that yeah, did not work for me. Well, I, I'm going to follow right behind you. Let me tell you my my story with the Black Album. Rivers fucked me again. <laughs> Built up my expectations after after some good stuff. Got me all like Weezer comes out with yeah the, we're gonna do the black album it's gonna be like the beach boys gone bad i'm gonna cuss in it it's gonna be you know i'm thinking it's gonna be the opposite of the white album it, i guess it kind of is because it's shitty but you know you think you, you think it's gonna be good and then he comes out with this and literally has a song on it called die you zombie bastards which is about He's, he's talking shit to his fans, all the ones that are like stuck on blue and Pinkerton saying, you know, get over it and move on. But it's like, well, two albums ago, you were apologizing to your fans saying you were going back to the shack. And now you're like, Don't right. die. Like, <laughs> fuck Rivers. So I, I was super hyped for this record. And then Pacific came out and I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. He, Rivers had to get this out of his way. We're going to, we're still going to get the black album. No. Uh, oh, you got stop. it all right. <laughs> can't knock the hustle is awful. Uh, high is a kind of I kind of like the video music video is great. It's like Mr. Rogers. Okay. It's on Mr. Yeah, Rogers. I mean, it, it's it, the song's fine. It's very inoffensive. It, it could have been an Elton John song. It could have been, you know, like a Paul McCartney song. You know, it, it just very by the book radio from probably Rivers Youth. See, and, I, think, I think Rivers has this internal battle of like wanting to be number one and like on the chart charts and the rock star, but then he also wants to like be creative and actually write good stuff. And like he swings back and forth like fucking one half that every one album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Living in LA and Piece of Cake are trash. <laughs> I'm just being honest. The music sucks, but I kind of like the lyrics because he's just like talking about you know, telling people the truth and how it kind of fucks them. Like walk into the venue, you slip me your CD. You asked me if I'd listen, give you my critique. I listened to it, but halfway through it, I had to quit. Your band sounds like shit. Again, he's fucking, you know, talking about his fans. The, the Laura Jane Grace song, throw shade at Neil Young, which is we're two for two now. <laughs> I'm running bands, throw shade at Neil Young. Uh, plus he mentions a red beret. Yeah, said, put on your red beret. I thought, baby. I thought about you uh, first there. Tim hasn't seen the beret yet. It starts. It comes out next week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Stay tuned. That's right. California snow is just awful. I feel like there's a good album here. It's just buried under really bad electronic poppy bullshit. <laughs> That's. I mean, it's not that much higher than Pacific Daydream. They're they're, they're both kind of. What the fuck, Weezer. Yeah, yeah, I, you know. I said that that should be the title of the next album. <laughs> what the fuck, Weezer? Um, Tim, give us your number 11. Number 11, okay. Um, so if you haven't caught on yet, the, the fatigue set in. And so, okay, human is going to fall in at number 11. Um, Ooh, that's was, a hot take. No, that's <laughs> that's a hot take. <laughs> I don't know. It it just felt uh, it, again like very singer songwritery. Um, I had no notes, so I'm just going off my memory here. So I'm sure I'm wrong, but uh, it did. It it was just boring. It was there. I couldn't really tell what song was what at that point, and nothing jumped out at me. It, it, something has to be a number eleven. So it's definitely an album. You got to be in the right. Like it's a good album to go to sleep to. Like it's super chill. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was. It felt like a like a Harry Nilsson kind of album or a Cat Stevens, <laughs> something like that. You know, just very acoustic-y and uh, droney. I don't know. I, I'm probably way wrong. I'm probably remembering it way wrong. I didn't like it. No, well, you know, I'm not gonna. The, your descriptive words aren't. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna knock. We're not gonna knock your hustle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you. <laughs> now, I, but I do believe that it's a much better album than your, you know, 
but the reasoning behind it isn't far off from you know what it is. Yeah, you could tell you well, actually listened to Maybe I'll it. revisit it. Then. Yeah. Maybe I'll revisit it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if that one's your cup of tea. I, you know. Yeah, the, the guy with the circle jerk shirt is probably <laughs> going to like okay, you. Hey, I like all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, Jason, what are you looking at number 11 here? Joe, why are you always going last? Because it's my turn to go last. <laughs> oh, okay. Because you, you go first next time, then I go first. All right, I'm going with... Hurley. This is the most. We're past the really bad. Now we're just kind of in the non offensive Weezer, the mid. There's nothing really special about it, nothing really sticks out. Um, I like memories, I like train wrecks. Train wrecks is just a good song about a couple, you know, against the world. Shout out to Desmond Child. (laughs) He tried. He tried his best. Uh, Unspoken is just an unoffensive acoustic song. Where's my sex, though? That should have been on Ratitude. That's that's your your Weezer cringe at its finest. Mm -hmm. Hang On is damn good as well. The album kind of peters at the end. And I like Time Flies, but like the recording, I don't know. It's... There's like this weird background noise in it. I don't know if it's on purpose, but it's just it just irritating me. Um, but her, overall, Hurley, you know, if you're bored and just want to hear a Rivers or a Weezer's album, Hurley's not too bad. You don't have to. You just have one song to really skip. I was surprised. Uh, I'm not sure if this was the first one on it or not, but I was surprised to see that they ended up on Epitaph. Yeah. So they the reason this album came out was because like gratitude bombed like with the fans with the critics <laughs> everybody so they like they had like a week and they're like here here's a here's a weezer record okay and it's on it, yeah it's on epitaph it's kind of weird but but gratitude's not on it is gratitude on a different label yeah I'm I, think, to I think that's on a different label yeah it that's still been. on dgc okay okay that's probably okay. got dropped <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um my number 11 is the same. Um so it is also Hurley. Um now I love me some Hugo Race, some Hurley, or Jorge Garcia the actor. I love that guy. I think he's I think he's great. Uh and Lost. Um this is the most okay album I think I've ever listened to in my entire life. Um <laughs> it's it's not offensive besides uh where's my sex? That is just a bad song. That's just not good. But this album, you can pretty much put it on and, you know, not piss anybody off and not be ever anybody's favorite album ever. You know, you're going to be right in the middle. Everybody's going to be like, eh, this is okay. <laughs> um, so there's nothing wrong with it. It's not like we have a lot of bad songs here, but we don't have a lot of good songs either. Uh, I do like uh, Memories uh, and Ruling Me. Um, I really like the beginning and the music for Trainwreck. I thought that was good. Um Four or unspoken. You got a real cool pickup in the music in the middle. Still just a okay song. Um, and then that last one you were talking about, "Time Flies." I'm with you. That's exact my notes. The it's a good song, but the sound is really weird. Um, I don't understand what's happening there. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand if they went a, with that lo-fi effect to where it sounds like it was recorded in the '50s or something. In a yes. cave, in the fifties, in a cave somewhere or something. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. Know what they're doing and they're all standing in a tin can, and it's <laughs> yeah. all underwater. And like, they're they using Joe Silva's boom mic. Uh-huh. Ooh. <laughs> Got him. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand it. Jason, give us number ten. Oh, uh, before you give us number ten, let me. I don't think we mentioned this. We might not even mention this to Tim. We're, we're going to find out. A, obviously we don't know each other's picks. But B, um, because this is 14 albums, we're going to do this as a two-parter. Um, so we're going to get up to we're probably around you know number seven and uh, cut it out. And then uh, tomorrow you will see part two of this. I don't know why my or wait back. two days, then watch part two, then watch part one, then go back and watch part two, <laughs> and then watch part one and then part two. And subscribe, and uh, and watch. Is it art? Because it's going to be this. Is it art? Weezer's going to be fun. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Jason, what's yeah. your number ten? All right, my number ten is going to be Van Weezer. 
I guess I like it a little bit better than you guys. Uh, I mean, I've seen some hate for it, but it's energetic. Or Hero, sorry. The song Hero gets a lot of hate, but it's it's fun. It's energetic, you know. All the good ones kind of sounds like a make-believe song, so it's not too bad. But it's not good either. The end of the game is like, that to me, that one kind of sounded like Van Halen. The, the guitar in that one until River starts singing and then it just sounds like Weezer trying to sound like Van Halen. <laughs> uh, Blue Dream has the crazy train intro. Intro? It's the whole uh, song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then River starts singing and he's singing like some fucking Ringo Starr Octopus Garden level yeah. lyrics. Yeah, it gets weird. It gets weird. Uh, she needs me is another one with great lyrics about doing stupid main mundane shit for a significant other, like opening a jar of GIF or recording TV shows. It's <laughs> dumb. It's fun. And that has to be a Weezer album too. Opening a jar of GIF. <laughs> <laughs> album number seventeen. That's right. <laughs> Rivers will do it too. And, <laughs> and I hope he does. And I hope does like it. Yeah, let's have it so like. <laughs> Yeah. Moves rivers, rivers in a direction that we want. Uh, Precious metal, metal girl, like with a name like that, you would think, oh yeah, this is gonna rock. But it's like an acoustic song, but it's still it, it's a good closer. I, mean, I, I like how it. he talks about precious metals and a metal girl. You know, I like that. Yeah, position, mm -hmm. I guess, or you know that mm -hmm. com combination. We're we're still not in like top tier Weezer. We're still kind of in the mid, not offensive to me. <laughs> so. You know, we're getting there. Um, my number 10 is going to be Pacific uh, Daydream. That's too high. Uh, that's, that's where it belongs. It's not, oh. uh, this is not a great album by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I just really like the sound of it. I think it has a really good sound for some reason. I just, the whole way through, I was like, this, this sounds good. The songs aren't particularly great, but it sounds good to me. Um, so I like, uh, Mexican Fender, that's a great song. Um, I like the Beach Boys. I don't like that song, though. Uh, <laughs> feels like Summer's a decent song. Um, I love Happy Hour. I thought Happy Hour was cool. Um, I like that. Um, Weekend Woman's okay. Um, quarterback Blitz was decent. Um, Sweet Mary, I have no notes for. Uh, Get Right was good. Uh, it's got a pretty good end, at least. Um, La Mancha Screwjob, I, you know, once again, I got a question mark, so it's a song that I blanked out on, so it probably isn't that great. And uh, Any Friend of Diane's, I am torn between. If it's, you know, I don't know who Diane is. That's really my question for him. I mean, well, you was... need to be her friend. That's yeah. what the, Diane's the not his wife, part. so I was like, it's any friend of Diane's, a friend of mine, maybe it's just a friend of his, who knows. Yeah, it's just a friend of a friend, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I, but I, I thought the sound was really good in it. I really like how that whole album kind of, just a feel and sound of it. Song's okay. <laughs> okay. It, it, mean... it's, it's not higher than 10. <laughs> Tim, uh, <laughs> go give me your number 10. Okay. Well, I, I think now is where I would start saying we enter the inoffensive um kind of like it's just their mode everything up to this point i would probably describe as the no it's very offensive <laughs> um but uh, number 10 i'm gonna go with the white album it's uh it's it's rock it's got some r and b it's got some acoustic it's it's got a hodgepodge of everything for 2016 and it doesn't go extreme any way whatsoever it's very middle of the road uh, i do have notes for that but literally every song the uh it was either i'm like oh okay this is rock this is not and then everything else is just blank it just it left me with nothing uh i uh in trying to prepare for coming up with a ranking for 14 albums i started giving them like letter grades and this one got a D. Okay. So All right. it's like, it, it's not quite as good as a, just a, a basic rock album. Uh, Hot take? 
Maybe. Yes, that's a little hot. So far. But Tor- yeah, I don't know. It just didn't do anything for me. Yeah, Tor- uh, your explanation might be the hot take of it. We're I, okay. I, don't think it's that bad, but. I, I, I could see somebody who had to listen to all these together, maybe. But from like somebody who like went from album to album, this is a fantastic in 2016 for Weezer. <laughs> okay, sure. And I can see that. Um, yeah. No, I can definitely see that. But I, uh, with 14 albums, I, I just think Ooh. some are better. And yeah. so, yeah, it's just, that. yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I, it, I don't think it's my turn, but who cares? I'm going with the White Album for number nine also. Uh, yeah, it's it just kind of bad. And I, I think that your, uh, maybe your reasoning might be the hot take, but, I'm you know, I didn't listen to this. I listened to this in a crunch, basically. So it, it wasn't like, oh, this came out a couple of years after uh, everything will be all Yeah, no, I I'm listened like, to oh, this is... six albums on Saturday and then the other eight on Sunday. So this would have been on Sunday. And I don't think this is a bad – this is way better than Pacific Daydream. Like, we, we have a distinct line here of where we're going from uh, 10 to 9. Um, I think that it's uh, a good album. Um I think that his cringy song, I think it's hilarious because I was like, uh, I usually don't like his weird girl songs. Um, that's, that is is my specific note to it. Let me find out what this one's called. Which one do you think is cringy? The, the Thank God for Girls? Yes. Thank God. Um, usually his, his weird girl songs are not my thing. They turned out real cringy, and this one was okay. And then the Adam and Eve uh, part, the Adam part came in, and I was like, well, we're, we're kind of back to this is a weird moment. Yeah, I... Um, I was like, I don't know if you needed to do that part there. I mean, you were you were doing okay, Big Rivers. You were doing okay, and you just had to twist it. You had to be like, oh, let's get a little weird. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys put it that low because I thought I was gonna have a hot take at my number nine, but you guys just <laughs> aim all the comments down below at those two guys. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, as always, please send all your hate mail to me. <laughs> That's right. Um. I don't have a lot else to say about uh, do you want to get high is I mean, it's whatever. Um, King of the World's a good song. Um, Summer Lane and Drunk Dory was okay. Um, no, not that one. I like number eight. I like LA Girls. Um, I don't know if it's a good song or not, but I liked it. Um, Jacked Up and Endless Bummer I thought were good. So we had, we had some good songs Jeez. here. LA Girls is so good. That sounds like a blue song with that swing. I thought, you know, I liked it. Yeah, you know, Like I said, I don't know, once again, I don't know if that's a good song or a bad song, but I enjoyed it uh, when I was listening to it. I was like, I didn't have time to dissect it much, but I was listening to it, I was like, I like this song. I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, Jason, what is your number nine? I don't know where I'm out of order. Well, see, I, well yeah, because you skipped. You skipped me, see? I thought my okay. uh, introduction into White, we go ahead and get the hate mail out of the way. All right, well. We're just trying to, you know, keep things economical here. That's, we need to make sure that my number nine ends up on the same part as you guys' White Album, because I'm going to go with Make Believe. I don't like, I don't hate this album as much as everybody else. I, I It's, okay, Beverly Hills is simple. It's corny, it's dumb, but it's catchy. Mm-hmm. I think it takes a lot of shit because it was the first Weezer song that kind of it, it kind of ushered in what's to come. Uh, perfect situation. Fuck anybody who says this is bad. This is a great song. The lyrics. The okay, music. so the um, it, the song's fine. The one thing I had a problem with. Is he literally says singing na 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 na, I'm like that's just uh, that's, that's cheap. It's fun. <laughs> that's a fun song to sing. All right, uh, this is such a pity. It's not really a good song. Um, I don't mind. Hold me in peace too much. All right, here we go, Joe. We are all on drugs. It's fun. Sorry, not sorry. The damage in your heart and pardon me are decent. My best friend sounds like a green album song. I love the chorus. It's so happy. How does it go? 
You're my best <laughs> friend. <laughs> and I love you. The last three tracks, they're all they're all good. Oh, I um, think I lost them. It's got to be Jason singing, right, guys? I'm joking. I didn't lose you. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> that was good. That was a good one. I like that. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> overall, it's not a bad album. Maybe at the time when we only had previous four to compare it to, it was really shitty. But now in 2023, it's not that bad of a Weezer album comparatively. It's mid. Um, I can see that. Tim. Rick Rubin produced it too, so that's interesting. Like you know, at oh. the very least, you're going to find something there. That's the kind sandwiches. of that's kind of why the album Rivers was at like Beverly Hills. <laughs> so Rivers was on his down. You know, he was depressed after Maladroit failed commercially. Okay, so he wrote like a bunch of like sad songs, and then Rick Rubin gave him a book of like like a prayer book some kind of i don't, I don't remember what it was some kind of how to rhyme uh, scooby-doo with california no some kind of like holy you know peaceful zen bullshit so rivers got happy again so they then they wrote beverly hills so they tried to make all these sad songs sound like beverly hills and that's why the production again it's just overproduced and weird oh, okay that's it i tell you we okay. just got like a super interesting background like there it's more interesting than the albums well it was it was a fun wikipedia read so that's <laughs> for sure um tim give us your number nine number nine okay uh number nine is kind of a weird album for me uh i'm gonna go with the red album um it wasn't bad like the production on it was great um also rick rubin uh produced some of it as well as jack knife lee and weezer um so it sounds like it was a couple different sessions um it's very radio friendly uh i think the greatest man that ever lived is an interesting um like bohemian rhapsody slash november rain style song where they're trying to be pretty epic i don't know how successful it is i think out of all those attempts is probably the most successful of them um pork and beans my notes say made for radio sugar ray uh, <laughs> hard Get songs Heart Songs was a weird, like, I never thought I'd hear Debbie Gibson and Slayer mentioned in the same breath. Mm -hmm. um, but it also reminded me of, like, We Didn't Start the Fire, where we're just kind of just randomly naming stuff. Um, but it wasn't terrible. Um, what, what's interesting about that song is it, one of the lyrics is uh, never going to give you up. So sure. Tech, and this predates the whole Rick Rolling thing by a year. So technically, Rivers was the first person to Rickroll. <laughs> well, I think technically Rick Astley would have been the well, first yeah. to do it. But um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a weird. Um, it was around this time in the discography, I really started getting the feeling of like, yeah, okay, you know, we're we're going for a radio friendly sound, and. Um, and we're trying to do things like, you know, that people are going to like or whatever. And I couldn't help but think about the Foo Fighters. And I don't think Weezer did that as well as the Foo Fighters. Um, but they're trying. And uh, like, uh, like, um, yeah, Pork and or Heart Songs. It's kind of like a Foo Fighters ballad, but also with that Sugar Ray country rap silliness going on i wasn't sure about that uh everybody get dangerous was kind of like a um kind of rap rocky um uh, and then it's got that weird symphony sympathy for the devil outro just out of nowhere um but it's very reminiscent of the the symphony for the devil um 
Let's see. Uh, Dreamin' was an interesting song. It was a pop song. And then, like, the last 10 seconds could have been a Green Day song. Uh, it was weird. <laughs> um, thought I knew. My notes literally say more Sugar Ray. Uh, Cold Dark World is like if Kid Rock was in the Foo Fighters. And that this suck. Yeah, it would. Well, and here we are. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, where these albums all start one place and end up somewhere completely different. Like, um, the last two songs on this album were actually pretty cool. The automatic was uh, had some cool guitar stuff. Also, kind of again, I couldn't help but compare to the Foo Fighters. Uh, and then I think the last song was The Angel and the One, which was also cool. Uh, could have been like that big 70s rock, like a Paul McCartney song type thing. Uh, we'll get to it later, but the cover is, um, I don't know. He's got that country outfit on, and it almost fits the music, too. Like, there's just enough of it where it's like, yeah, okay. So, okay. Um yeah, where are we at? Number nine, red. Oh, that, that, that's kind of interesting because the angel in the one is like a fan favorite off that. Okay, yeah, I can see that. That was, that was a pretty good song. Pretty good song. Um, All right, Joe, give us your number eight. No, it's your turn to go first. <laughs> Tim, Jason, Joe, Tim, Jason, Joe. Technically, it's, it'd be Tim's, but we're going to go ahead and go to you. I can go to number eight. Oh, I, I'll, it's already... I'll... <laughs> I'll go ahead and get it out the way. I'm going the green album. This is another hot take. We, son, we put the what did we put the white album down there, and he was talking about hot takes. My goodness, hey. <laughs> the white album has personality. The green album is just mid. The green album is if you were a Weezer fan and you went through Blue Album and you went through Pinkerton and you're like, holy shit, and then. Rivers self doubted himself. He, you know, Pinkerton is a whole different story, but they made this album just to put it on the radio. And they, it sounds like they phoned it in a lot. It, it's, it's just a knee jerk reaction to Pinkerton bombing. Uh, Let Go is a good opener. Photograph's okay. I never really cared for Hashpipe or Island in the Sun. Hashpipe kind of grew on me over the years, but I, I still skip Island in the Sun. It's, just long and monotonous. Uh, Knockdown is probably one of the best ones on here. And I love Smile. It's not a bad album. It's just a, it's kind of like Hurley. It just kind of exists to me. It's like, here's another pop record so we can be on the radio again. Okay, yeah. so I have another question then as the non fan here. Um, uh, shout out to Matt Sharp. How much of how much of the green album is uh, them missing him? Yeah, if you're friends with Pete, then you're then friends, you're friends with, with me. <laughs> yeah, that was, the Rentals album was great. Yeah, I will actually go revisit that after this. Uh, <laughs> I have fond memories of that one. Um, but even even I mean, obviously, we'll get to the albums that he's on. But uh, you, like a lot of the weird vocal harmonies and stuff, never felt the same. No, no, after he left, and I think, um, who was their bassist on this one? Because I think he's only on this album. Oh, interesting. Okay, Mikey Welsh. Yeah, he's only on this album. He ended up like having personal problems and went to rehab or some kind of mental thing, and then. But Rivers, he's okay. Like, no problems there, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The Green Album being number eight is a, uh, that's quite a drop. That, that's a, that's a, I'm, I'm sorry. Out. It's, it's just, it just exists to me. It's, I, I, I didn't, I didn't like it at the time. It's grown on me because they put out worse albums. <laughs> yes, <they> but <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, well, my number eight is uh, going to be Everything Will Be All Right in the End. That's a fucking hot take. <laughs> um, 
things have gotten. Uh, so everything will be it's your all right. graphics right. Yeah, everything will be all right in the <laughs> or okay in the end. Um, actually, when I first heard it, uh, I thought it was going to be much further down, um, and then I've I've kind of gone back and listened to some of it, and it's moved up. Now, if I go back and listen to it again, will it move up again? I I can't tell you that uh, at the moment, but. Uh, so it, number eight for me feels right. Um, it feels okay for this album. So um, one through four, the first four songs I think are okay songs. Um, let me see what their names are because my uh, once again my note taking was really really good this time, so I didn't put titles <laughs> or anything. Um, ain't got nobody. That's back, all I put. <laughs> back to the Shack, Eulogy for a Rock Band, and Lonely Girl I think are okay songs. I think they're okay. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. They're not bad. They're just not great. Um, I like, I've had it up to here. Um, I like the British are coming. I kind of like his high notes, like how he gets real high when he says the, on the British are coming, uh, especially that part. Um, da Vinci's okay. Um, I like go away. I like, uh, the Cleopatra, the Patra, Patra, Patra part is pretty good. Um, Foolish Father is a good song. Um, I really like the instrumental part of, uh, the Future Scope Trilogy part one. Um, part two and part three, I think, are just unnecessary. I was like, this is an unnecessary addition to this album. We're... Which parts were unnecessary? I'm sorry. Uh, the Future Scope Trilogy, part two and part three. Part two and three, okay. Yeah, 11 and 12. Or 12 okay. and 13. But you liked the first part? Yeah, I liked the first little instrumental. I thought that was cool. I was like, this is a cool okay. little instrumental. And then we just got, I was just like, this is too much. We're, we're through here. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> this man, leave a comment down below. This man put green at eight. Don't be trying to leave a comment. Yeah, leave a comment down below. Yeah, wants a better uh, album. Everyone, green uh, or uh, everything will be all right in the end. Let's the fans this. call it Ubate. Rebate. Um, well, my money back. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> Go smoke your hash pipe, Joe. <laughs> uh, Tim, give us your number eight. Okay, so. Uh... Yeah. Uh, he's like the blue album yeah, <laughs> <It's> exactly like... <laughs> me and Joe both dodged that bullet uh, no for my number 8 I'm going to go with make believe um, I, I dreaded this one going in because I think Beverly Hills is uh, it's not the worst song I've ever heard but it's on the list <laughs> Uh, if you're wondering, P.O.D.'s The Youth of the Nation is the worst song I've ever heard. Oh, man. Interesting. Um, that's a, that's a shit song, though. Yeah, that's a... That's oh, a, God, it's that's horrible. A, a Just like, oh, 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 yeah. Um, this one surprised me, though. Like, yeah, it started off, you know, much like a number of these albums. It starts one place and ends somewhere completely different. Um, like, perfect situation. I have the one complaint... Um, but no, otherwise, it's fine. No. Uh, this is such a pity. Was fun. Um, Hold me was fun. It's also kind of the the grungy Nirvana formula. Um, like all of this, we're still staying within the confines of radio rock, but we're doing some interesting things there. Uh, a couple of these songs I don't have notes for. I do have two songs, like kind of. Um, my best friend and freak me out. I think are the two, I think my the best two bad songs. Yeah, those are great songs. How, how um, does my best friend go? You know, <laughs> according my to my notes, friend. it goes exactly the same as the darkness hit. I believe in a thing called love, <laughs> and that note makes an appearance on a couple songs over a course of albums. And then I did find on one album, I'd have to. Uh, we'll get to it but the dude actually ends up writing a Weezer song. So it made a lot of sense to me. Uh, Tim's not singing. He's not going to be on no TikTok. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Chinese don't need to hear that. Um, yeah. So we love like, you. <laughs> sponsor us. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. It, it was a weird album. It started off just pure pop. And then it kind of got a little like radio rocky. And then, yeah, I thought like it ended really strongly with some interesting experimentation. Um, like the last song I think is haunt you every day. Could have been like a Beatles power ballad type thing. Like uh, just interesting stuff. So 
uh, again, it's not like a great album or anything. I still think we're in that middle section, but obviously we're getting closer. Um, so yeah, make believe. I always liked, um, man, you really freak me out. Um, yeah, it's like yeah. a, it's like a fan, like stalking them. But okay. when I was doing research for this video, I found out that it wasn't rivers. It was the, um, I can't remember if it was either the basis. Rivers are stalking a fan. No, it's actually a song about a spider that is either the basis of the other guitarist saw and it freaked him out and he wrote the song and then realized well, that's really stupid. So he changed spider to man and made it into a guy, you know, made it into a fan. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, kind of a weird, gothy, moody, like song. It reminded me a lot of like the eighties, like, uh, new order joy division type feel <laughs> that like came out of nowhere and i thought they actually did it pretty well so yeah i, I like that one cool cool all right um my number seven is also going to be make believe well are we going to part two? Oh yeah because yeah. half of 14 is seven that's true well, all right. Well, we're going to yeah. cut here. Come, <laughs> come, come join us tomorrow and see part two. Yes, sir. All right. Welcome back <laughs> to number seven real let's, quick. Let's, uh, <laughs> no, let's hit a uh, real answer in there. For, so thank you so much for watching. Um, this is part one of our Weezer uh, rant and rink. Uh, we really appreciate you all. I'm not going to do the whole big uh, outro rigmarole that I normally do until the end of part two. So you'll have to come and see it there because we all know you're not really watching these videos for Weezer. You're watching them for my crazy outros, right? Yeah, that's when YouTube says people click off. That's right. <laughs> and up. apparently you got to click in to see where I rank Pacific Daydream. There you oh, go. shit. He still hasn't played. Oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, until we see you tomorrow, stay safe, make good decisions. Mm -hmm.